Uh, the Wonderland stories have been part of my life for a long time. I have a couple of kids and you know they've read the books and stuff like that but I always thought there was more to do with it. You know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of dated now that material and yet it's also timeless. So I thought that would be a great place to start from and, and to mine, mine all of that stuff. And uh, we have, you know, we've created kind of a new version but it has all the iconic characters and uh, and the fun full adventure that uh, Wonderland should have. For me, uh, music comes from characters that are larger than life in all of my shows. And certainly in Wonderland, you get so many of them. You know, every one of, his, every one of those characters is iconic. And they're all bigger than life. And they do things that are phantasmagorical. And so therefore, they have to sing. Uh, and from Alice to the Mad Hatter to the Queen, and they all have their own musical personalities, which was one of the great challenges and most fun about doing this show, was finding the musical personalities for each of these characters. This show is very much about uh, the journey that we as adults take. And so many, so many times when we take this journey, we always lose some of the innocence, therefore the child within us. And getting it back and fighting for that, I think, is a very important thing in life in general. And the story of Alice, our Alice, that's what happens to her. She does lose the child within. And in this great adventure in Wonderland, where she actually has to find and rescue her own child, she discovers the child within again. And of course, that makes her life so much richer and, and brings the story to a delightful end. First of all, my life is Wonderland. <laughs> I mean, I, I am, I'm, I'm romantic enough and corny enough to actually believe that. And I try every day to find that wonderland in my own life. And you know, you wake up every day and you do what you love to do, and you have the kids around you and things like that. You know, and you don't take those things for granted, and you realize how lucky you are and how blessed you are. So I really mean that, that, that I feel my life is wonderland. This show was about getting back in touch with the things that I really loved. This was about going back to my roots as a pop songwriter, being as honest and as real as I can. And that's been part of this journey that's made it so rich for me and, and wonderful, and I hope that translates. You know, many years ago I, I was lucky enough to write a song called Where Do Broken Hearts Go for Whitney Houston when she was in the beginning of her career. And Clive Davis, who was her mentor and, and ran Arista Records, he always said to me, Frank, 8 to 80, and I would say, what does that mean? And he said, the music should appeal to my kids and to my mom. And if you can do that and capture that, you know, that's a special thing. We can't always do that when we create stuff. I think Wonderland is an opportunity for us to really do that. And I think in the process so far, both here in Tampa and Houston, and certainly in the workshops in New York, we have found that to be true. It's a family show, but it's a multi-generation show. At first I thought I was writing it only for my kids, but I'm a kid too. And, you know, and I feel like I've written it for my kids, and me as a kid, and my mom, who was also a kid. And so I really feel that's part of the magic of the show. This show, this particular journey, has actually been pretty incredible. First of all, it's a Florida journey. It started here in Florida. The first workshop was here in Florida, and I'm a Florida boy, so I take some pride in that. Um, you know, shows like Jekyll and Hyde took 17 years from conception to, uh, to Broadway, and I used to tell my mom every year, you know, wait till you buy that opening night dress and stuff like that. This one, for all practical purposes, you know, has really been a train, and I think that's because We've learned so much along the way in the process. Every time we've put it in front of another audience, we've learned from that audience. And hopefully we've applied those lessons into our writing and into you know, the further development of the piece. We've had great producers, and because of that, the momentum of the show has never stopped. Jack Murphy and I met uh, in the early 90s, I believe, and we started writing for Linda Etter. And that led to writing shows together. And now we've written, I think, a half a dozen shows together. And we're two completely different personalities, which, of course, makes it more fun. Uh, he's the ultimate realist, but I think he's a pessimist. And he thinks I'm a cockeyed optimist, and he's absolutely right. Um, and we have a lot of fun, and he's just a, he's a wonderful wordsmith and a wonderful craftsman. And he really, really has that, the chops to go between theater and pop. And in a show like Alice in Wonderland, you need those chops. You have to have that. Gregory Boyd's the reason I'm in theater, period. Uh, because in 1989-90, he took me and Linda and my music team under his wing at the Alley Theater in Houston, Texas, where we started the journey of Jekyll and Hyde. And that journey and that, uh, that time of our lives was so romantic and so sexy and so much fun 
that even though, you know, I was doing pretty good in the pop world and my friends in that world said, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? I, it was just such an amazing experience that I got hooked. I fell in love with the theater, the process of doing theater as long as I can do it in the way I wanted to do it. And Greg let me do that and, and that's why we're talking today. You, you know, every show I write, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite song in the show and stuff. It's hard. It's like asking me, you know, which of my kids do I love more? It's, it's a tough thing. But there are touchstones. There are emotional touchstones for me. Um, you know, this, this show reminds me of Jekyll, even though it's completely different in its musical vocabulary and story, in that there are half a dozen moments that we really bring the house down every night. And, you know, Jekyll had that, and the audience gives that back to you at the end of the night. I'm learning that we, we have that here, and I'm seeing that that's true. You know, there are songs like One Night, which is the boy band song. Uh, they deliver it, and it's not a pastiche of a boy band song. It's a real boy band song, and, and they kill it. Uh, Karen Mason's version of Off With Their Heads brings down the house every night. But for me, you know, there are, there are some emotional touchstones in this show. Certainly the final sh song in the show. It's called Finding Wonderland. It's about finding Wonderland in our own life. Uh, Janet does such a soulful, beautiful job doing it, and it gets me all the time. So I think Finding Wonderland is probably my favorite in the show right now. But, you know, if you ask me that in a couple of months, I might have a different answer. We have uh, in, the, in the show right now an amazing, amazing entertainer uh, named Kate Schindel, who I'm proud to say I, I took out of a deli in New York after she won Miss America and put her in Jekyll and Hyde. It was her first Broadway gig. She's 10 feet tall, she looks like a goddess, and she sings like a goddess. And having that talent uh, to play with has been very inspiring for me. I love knowing the voices that I'm writing for, and whether it's Julie Andrews or Liza Minnelli or Whitney Houston or Linda Etter, I, I love doing that. And having Kate in the show has inspired a couple new songs. One is called Nice Little Walk, and then at the end of the show, she sings this, you know, slamming, kicking rock and roll anthem called I Will Prevail and she's one of the few people that can really pull it off like she does and uh, that's been again a wonderful thing on the journey of this show someone like Kate comes into the process and you, you work around that and you work for that and that's been a lot of fun. I would say we all have a child within and no matter what happens in our lives good bad and different we always should try to be in touch with that. I think coming to this show, especially if you come with your kids or your parents, I think you'll get back in touch with that. And I think leaving the theater with a big smile on your face, which is great.